Hi there, Matt here for uh, totallykeyboard.net. Today we're going to be looking at phase offset modulation, which is a feature within Subtractor in Reason. <clears throat> and wh what it is essentially is uh, within the oscillator section here, the, uh, there's this phase knob. Now a lot of people I know who use Reason never ever bother with this because it has no obvious effect on the sound. <laughs> See, I can, I can just play with it, and and nothing will happen. Um, and the other thing is, is is when it does do things, um, it it's uh, it's complicated and it it's it's confusing. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to explain a bit about how it works. Uh, this is um, a feature that is unique to Subtractor, uh, at least within Reason. There, there's not uh, an equivalent feature within Thor. Um, and what it's doing is uh, when the oscillator, let's take for example oscillator one here, it's not actually generating just one waveform, it's generating a second one. And depending on the position of the phase knob, uh, it's either a whole cycle uh, behind or a whole cycle in front. Um, or it might be half cycles, uh, don't quote me on that. But basically uh, the waveform is going to be either behind or in front or somewhere in between. Um, and the way that it affects the sound depends on this mode. So, uh, and this is completely independent within this one oscillator. This doesn't take the second one into account at all. So it either multiplies the second one by the original or it subtracts it from the original. And they produce slightly different sounds uh, and they're useful for different things. Um, but if we just, uh, if we take the subtraction as an example, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sweep through, I'm going to play a note. Now, you might notice that that sounds quite a lot like pulse width modulation. And in this particular example, that's exactly what it is, because when you uh, take the uh, take the two waveforms and subtract them from each other, you actually end up with a completely different waveform. And if I turn the uh, phase all the way up, you actually hear that that's a, that's actually a square wave. And if I just um, A B that with another square wave. Um, So you can actually hear, as I uh, that that's that's pretty damn close. So um, it's uh, it, it actually adds pulse width modulation into Subtractor, which it doesn't actually have. So it's it's useful for that. You can generate uh, you know a lot of a lot of the sounds that you would be quite um, that you would be quite unable to do. Um, and it's not just good for that. I mean, you, one, once you start playing with the more complex waveforms, you end up with much more uh, interesting results because the more partials that there are and the more complex the waveform, then um, the more unusual the, the new waveform will be. And you can actually get some pretty cool modulations going. So if I just give you an example... And uh, there's another waveform, I think it's number eight. And that's just the subtractive mode. If I switch the multiplication mode on, it's a subtle difference, but uh, it's definitely there. Um, and then, of course, you can modulate it. You can uh, stick an LFO on it, so that's set to phase. So it goes from being quite static sounding to being quite sort of rich and um, there's a lot of movement in there. And then you can do the same with the mod envelope. But the, the one cool thing that I like to do is if you just create a, a matrix pattern sequencer, um, and I held down shift there as I clicked, and that means that when you flip around the back, it's not actually connected to anything. So if I just hook the curve up to the oscillator phase, 
and then uh, you know draw some random crap in like that and just turn it off and there we go and once again I forgot that you've got to change tracks So you end up with that quite cool um, pulse width modulation, uh, sorry, no, uh, sample and hold. I'm getting my terms mixed up today. So you can uh, you can get some really cool sounds out of it just using this. Um, and if I just get rid of that for a second and go back to the good old saw, um, you, if you set them up this way, you can get a, a, a nice sort of really thick saw sound, um, almost like one of those um, super saws that you hear in a lot of trance music. So if I just turn the... How did I do this before? nice thick sound out of it uh, so yeah that's just a very sort of quick rough demo uh, of some of the things you can do with it but it just shows you that subtractor isn't something you should ignore because um, Thor tends to get all of the attention because it's got all the bells and whistles but subtractor really does have still quite a lot to offer um, so give it a go and um, if you like it let me know in the comments all right cheers guys take care